The platform is a prison where each cell holds two inmates, and it is structured vertically with 333 levels. Every day, a platform with food descends through these levels, with enough portions for all the prisoners, but not everyone is willing to share. The film is based on changes made to the previous penitentiary system. It starts with a scene where children are playing on a slide. Then the citizen prisoners begin naming items and favorite dishes they would like to receive during their stay in this specific prison. One of the inmates named Zamiatin, who was convicted for an attempted arson, asks for pizza. The story shifts to a cell on the 24th floor of the multi-tiered prison, where Zamiatin is serving his sentence alongside his cellmate Perempuan. He bitterly observes how only the dough remains on his pizza. All the toppings were eaten on the 21st floor above. Zamiatin tries to eat a chicken leg, but supporters of the equality doctrine from the upper floors advise him not to. The prisoners have established a rule that each person should eat only the food they chose for themselves. If the rules are broken, everyone will start taking more than their share, and nothing will be left for those on the lower floors. Considering that rotation happens every month, and one day they might end up on the lower floors themselves, starving, it is important to follow the unwritten law. Reluctantly, Zamiatin complies when his cellmate offers him her fish patties. As the platform descends to the lower levels, the prisoners carry on with their activities and conversations. Suddenly, information arrives that the 44th floor has stopped reporting the distribution of food, which could lead to starvation, considering that there are 333 floors in total. The prisoners plan to descend to the 44th and 21st floors the next day to investigate. When the platform descends the following day, adherents from the upper levels descend to the 21st and start a fight with the violators. Neighbors from the 23rd floor warn Zamiatin that he might also have to take part in the Solidarity Revolution. To do so, they must arm themselves with metal bars from the bed frame. Despite his sturdy appearance, Zamiatin is ready to forgive those who stole his pizza, just to avoid getting involved in the conflict. When the platform arrives at the 24th floor, instead of food, there is a lifeless body on it. Two more bodies fall from above. The last person from the top tries to push all the food down to the lower levels, so as not to violate the administration's rules and leave food behind after the platform descends. But he doesn't make it in time. He is threatened with punishment by fire, and the burning body falls onto the table. Perempuan puts out the flames while the two remaining fighters from above continue battling. Zamiatin stands in shock while his cellmate helps defeat one of the guests. The platform begins to move and they have a few seconds to throw all the remaining food onto the platform to avoid punishment. A guest from the upper floor ties up the instigator of the food rebellion from the 21st floor, preventing Zamiatin from finishing him off. Zamiatin calls the guest from above Robespierre due to his lectures about the unwritten law established by some mythical teacher and his followers who are fighting for fair distribution of food. Learning that the teacher fed the needy with his own flesh as an act of self-sacrifice, Zamiatin suggests eating the dead body. But to avoid temptation, Robespierre throws it into the pit. The next day, during the food distribution, Zamiatin receives his portion, while Robespierre throws away the portions of those who died yesterday. So the surplus doesn't create inequality. This could lead to another wave of dissatisfaction and rebellion, as the death of a comrade should not be a reward. Then he places the prisoner from the 21st floor on the platform and goes down with him, searching for the anointed one. The next day, during another food distribution, Perempuan, under Zamiatin's disapproving gaze, throws away other people's portions, as Robespierre had instructed. Zamiatin follows her lead but secretly eats a small piece, which the neighbor from above notices. This repeats day after day. They pass information about the law to the other prisoners, ensuring fair distribution of food among all the levels. Gradually, the prisoners learn to help one another, sharing their food. On the last day they are to spend on the 24th level, Samiatin reveals that he was once a mathematician, but abandoned science due to his disillusionment with it, as theoretical mathematics allows solutions that are impossible in reality. By evening, news comes from below that, thanks to the fair distribution of food this month, it has reached as far as the 175th level. 
Overjoyed, Perempuan invites her cellmate to dance, and he agrees. The next morning, they wake up on the 180th floor, where many prisoners are starving, and communication breaks down at the 169th floor. Zamiatan becomes nervous, hoping that the supporters of equality will ensure the law is upheld, but he understands that the chances of this are slim. Many newcomers on the upper floors testify to the high mortality rate of the prisoners. It is likely that the platform reaches them empty every day. The only consolation comes from conversations about love and the triumph of law, but words cannot fill an empty stomach. As hunger worsens, Zamiatin becomes sick and Parampuan takes care of him. One day, a severed head flies into the pit. Above, they are punishing the barbarians, prisoners who break the law. Then another head falls down. Neighbors from above report that the barbarians are being punished, and they are searching for the fat man from the 24th floor who ate the food of the dead without a second thought. Parampuan lies, saying they were on the 46th floor before, covering for Zamiatin. They go to sleep in the same bed. That night Zamiatin recalls his interview before being imprisoned. It turns out he lied to Perempuan. All his business plans failed, his family disowned him, and his parents sent him here to teach him discipline. Feeling guilt, hunger, and hopelessness, he approaches the edge of the pit. Zamiatin asks Perempuan to visit his children after she is released, then sets his blanket on fire with a lighter, which he had brought according to the terms of his imprisonment, and jumps into the pit. He falls like a meteor, to the delight of the prisoners below, and lands on a pile of trash, where he is met by a crowd of starving people. After this, Perempuan wakes up on the 51st floor. She is told that only adherents or newcomers remain up to the 71st floor, so the overall situation is not bad. Her new cellmate is a one-armed newcomer to whom she has to explain the rules. It turns out that on the 54th floor lives a barbarian who was on the second floor the previous month and ate without stopping. Perempuan wants to descend and punish him, avenging Zamiatin's death. But those below order her to wait. According to the law, four people from two floors above must descend first to maintain the communication chain. She explains to her cellmate that if the rules aren't followed, people below die. At night, Perempuan can't sleep nervously clicking the lighter, the only thing left from her former cellmate, who now constantly haunts her. During the food distribution, her one-armed cellmate breaks the bed to arm herself and jumps onto the platform, urging Perempuan to seek revenge. On the floor below, another man joins them, leaving his companion behind to maintain communication. On the 53rd floor, they pick up two more, and the group of five descends to face the barbarian. He immediately strikes with a shiv, killing the first attacker. Within a minute, only three women with batons remain. The barbarian jumps onto the platform, which begins to descend, attempting to escape, but they knock him down. Perempuan jumps after him. A prisoner from the 50th floor strangles the barbarian, but he stabs him with a shiv, killing him. Perempuan knocks the barbarian unconscious with a baton, but hesitates when he starts begging for mercy. This pause allows the barbarian to climb onto the platform, which is descending to the lower levels. The one-armed woman wants to pursue him, but her companion stops her. Perempuan realizes that Tanya is a newcomer to the prison. They stay on the 50th floor along with a prisoner with Down syndrome who survived. The one-armed woman tells Perempuan that she has been here for half a year and always followed the law, helping to suppress dissenters. Once, she and her partner encountered an emaciated prisoner to whom they gave a portion of a deceased inmate. For this, they were punished by Dagen Babi, the most severe loyalist. One of them was sent down tied to the platform where she was eaten alive, and the other had her arm cut off. The one-armed woman says that even if you follow the laws of the administration and the loyalists, you can't get out of here. Your only chance is to escape during the prisoner rotation when they are put to sleep with gas. You just need to find a way to stay awake. The next day, a blind envoy named Daging Babi descends with his entourage on the platform, accompanied by the bound barbarian. As a reward, he allows the women to eat more than their share. But immediately after that, they face punishment for breaking the law, just like everyone else who has descended lower, since the law cannot be interpreted. It must only be obeyed. Moreover, for the one-armed woman, this is already her second violation. 
Unexpectedly, a neighbor with Down syndrome tells the envoy that he heard about their escape plan. Although he confuses the details, dogging Babitakas it lightly. The following day, Parampuan has her arm cut off, and her friend is tied to a table above and sent down to the hungriest prisoners. After the punishers leave, Parampuan dreams of children playing on a slide, forming a pile due to the lack of a cue. She wakes up on the 71st floor with a new neighbor, already familiar to Trimagasi from the first part. She advises him not to talk to the prisoners above or those below and asks which item he brought with him. The old man turns out to have a kitchen knife, which he gives her at her polite request to borrow it. As the platform descends, the old man begins to eat, ignoring the law. Parampuan, with the knife, steps onto the platform and advises him to descend with her. At the bottom, a fighter meets her, but Parampuan convinces him to join forces to oppose the adherents. They descend lower and lower, recruiting new allies and clashing with those loyal to the written law. When the platform runs out of space, Parampuan orders everyone to take up defense, recruiting new allies. She notices the barbarian she recently wanted to punish but ultimately spared, allowing him to escape. The morning begins with kitchen items flying through the hole. The supporters of equality are leaving, but Daganbabi's plan is much more sophisticated. He orders all the food to be thrown into the pit. The platform reaches the rebels empty, and when they weaken from hunger, the people above will come and kill them. The envoy is not concerned that everyone below will suffer. Nevertheless, he offers everyone to surrender, promising to punish only the instigators. But the rebels have an alternative proposal to descend and eat those who were unfortunate enough to be down there. During this, Parampuan recalls why she ended up in prison. During her exhibition, a little boy accidentally cut himself fatally on her sculpture. Although the court deemed it an accident and the exhibits were sold for millions, the artist came here to atone. Realizing that the plan has not gone as expected, the loyalists descend to engage in battle. They reinforce the platform with mattresses to descend peacefully after which a bloody bacchanalia begins. Knives, shivs, pieces of rebar, batons, and sheer animalistic rage are unleashed. Amid the chaos, the stubborn barbarian tries to take revenge on Parampuan and strangle her, but she uses the knife and plunges it into his side. By the time the platform descends, only a few remain alive among the pile of bloodied bodies, including the wounded Daganbabi. Parampuan prepares her escape plan. She swallows a piece of a pre-prepared painting with oil paints to poison herself and lose consciousness, hoping that she will be mistaken for a corpse and discarded during the monthly transport. In her unconscious state, she again sees children. The winner is taken away by an adult couple. When she comes to, Parampuan sees the cleaners tying her to a pile of dead bodies being transported in zero gravity. As the pile is dragged down to the lower 333rd level, the woman quietly frees herself from the ropes and hides under a bed. She watches as the facility staff prepare to place a small boy, the winner, on the bed, who has climbed to the top of the pyramid of children. At this level, children are regularly replaced, and few prisoners manage to find redemption by saving them. Parampuan crawls toward the boy to pull him from under the blanket and save him. Losing consciousness, she imagines the child lying on a table as the dead prisoners before her offer her a knife. She comes to on an empty platform, descending into the impenetrable darkness below the 333rd level, through which a faint light shines from above. Numerous dead figures approach her, politely offering Parampuan to go with them and not disturb the child from ascending to the surface with the platform. The girl decides to allow the child to ascend, as his purity and innocence are needed to improve the world. By making this self-sacrificial act, Parampuan completes her ultimate sacrifice, freeing herself from guilt and escaping her personal hellish existence.